Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Good. 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 Awesome. Okay. So my name is Fatima Esker. Um, I'm super honored to be here. I just, I really love the conversation between Sanford and Curly, and I'm, I'm really excited to um, share some work and then get into the conversation. So um, just a little bit about uh, me. I'm going to read some poems. But I just wanted to touch on Brown Girls really quickly. Brown Girls is a story that follows a friendship between two women of color, and it, it's based in Chicago, and it really kind of highlights the queer community of color, artistic community in Chicago, and kind of looks at um, this really intimate friendship as a kind of microcosm for that. Um, so I'm going to read a few poems, and if they're from my forthcoming book, which is called If They Come For Us, which is a book that deals a lot with kind of these generations of immigration that has occurred in my family. Um, my parents' generation was alive during um, partition, which is when British colonial, uh, the British colonizers left India and it became India and Pakistan. Um, and it was a really, really violent conflict that's not really talked about um, that often. And um, it kind of is about the way that my family has had all of these different ideas of what it means, who they are and what nation they are and the kind of like flimsiness of nationhood as a concept um, following me as like the first generation of American that was part of my family. Um, and so I'm going to read this poem. Um, does anybody know what Old Country Buffet is? Yeah? Okay, great. Sometimes people don't know it. It really makes me sad. Um, this, poem is, <laughs> this poem is called Old Country. <laughs> Old Country Buffet, where our family went on days we saved enough money. Everybody was in a good mood, even Mamu, our uncle, who never smiled or took off his coat and dyed his hair black every two weeks so we couldn't tell how old he was. We marched single file towards the gigantic red lettering across the gravel parking lot to announce our arrival. We, children, carrying our rectangle backpacks brimming with homework, calculators, and Lisa Frank trapper keepers, for we knew this was a day without escape, spread out across all the booths possible while our family ate and ate and ate and snuck food into the Tupperware they smuggled in. And no matter how we begged or whined or the waitress yelled or threatened to charge us more money, we weren't leaving until my greedy ass family had their fill. <laughs> oh, old country, the only place we could get dessert and eat as much of it as we wanted before our actual meal. The only place we didn't have to eat all the meat on our plates or else we were accused of being wasteful, told our husband would have as many pimples as rice we left behind. Here, our family reveled in the American way of waste. Manifest destiny our way through the mac and cheese, green bean casseroles, mythical foods we had only heard about on TV where American children rolled their eyes in disgust. Here, we learned how to say, I too have had meatloaf and hate it. Evidence we could bring back to the lunch table as we guessed what the other kids ate and they scoffed at our biryani. Here, the adults told us if we didn't like the strawberry shortcake, we could eat the ice cream or jello. We could get a whole plate just to try a bite and turn up our noses, and that was fine. Here, we loosened the drawstrings on our shalvar knees and gained 10 pounds. Here, we arrived at the beginning of lunch hour and stayed until dinner approached, until they made us leave. Here, we learned how to be American and say, we got the money, and we're here to stay. <laughs> in retrospect, I really loved growing up in an immigrant family because it's just constant confusion about America. It's like, what is this thing? Um, and a lot of it is through food. You know, a lot of it is like through that exchange of not really understanding these food cultures um, and, and kind of learning them. Um, this, I also, so I was in seventh grade when September 11 happened. Um, and it's really rough, like, being a seventh grader and, like, learning about B.O. and then also realizing, like, all of America hates you if you're Muslim, you know? So that was just, like, a kind of a thing that is also a reoccurring theme throughout my book. Um, and this poem is called The Last Summer of Innocence. The last summer of innocence was when the mosquito bites bloomed across my ass. Swells of mucus that bu burst when the bus bumped on the way to school. Blood seeping through the cotton of my underwear. The wound would dry, underripe blackberries staining the back of my dress. Each time I took my panties off, I tore the bites open. 
I went to the hospital three times that summer, my body always leaking, pus slow dancing down the back of my thighs, glistening like fresh baby oil in the moonlight. The summer, my sister shaved her armpits even though the adults said she couldn't. She took my uncle's dull razor and marveled at the smoothness, left our Muslim house in a long sleeve shirt before slipping down to a tube top on the bus. Haram, I hissed. But I too wanted to be bare-armed and smooth, skin gentle and worthy of touch. That was until she had a lump swell to the size of a golf ball from an ingrown hair, and we both landed back in the hospital rooms, doctors vacuuming liquid out of our muscles. The last summer of innocence was when my best friend gave me the two big thong with a silver heart clasp, and I put them on under my dress and buried my bloody granny panties behind the bleachers in the soil the boys used to touch each other and pretend it was a tackle. The last summer, y'all did that, don't lie. The last, the last summer of innocence was the summer after the towers fell, or were blown down or up, and I watched the TV over and over. The people running from the fire and smoke and jumping from the buildings, arms out like wings, their bird bodies orbiting the earth, a new sun. It was the summer the TV told me I was dangerous, and I tried to learn Spanish so I could pretend I was the other kind of other. It was the days I memorized the green leather seats of the school bus and stared straight ahead when the popular girls asked where I was from. My skin full of sores, pussing and oozing as the blood fled my body, trying to find anything else to call home. Wow. I'm going to read um, a poem called WWE um, that takes the form of a ghazal, which is like a, per a Persian form of poetry. Here is your auntie in her best gold-threaded shalvar kameez, made small by this land of American men. Every day she prays, rolls atha, pounds the kima, at night watches the bodies of these glistening men. Big and muscular, neck full of veins, bulging in the pen. Her eyes, cudgeled and wide, glued to sweaty American men. She smiles, guilty as a bride without blood. Her love of this new country, cold snow, and naked American men. Stop living in a soap opera, yells her husband, fresh from work, demanding his dinner, American. Men take and take, and yet you idolize them still. Watch your auntie as she builds her silent altar to them. Her knees fold on the rundown mattress, a prayer to the pen, her thusby and TV, the only thing she puts before her husband. She covers bruises and never lets us eat leftovers, a good wife. It's something in their nature, what America does to men. They can't touch anyone without teeth and spit unless one strips the other of their human skin. Now that you're older, your auntie calls to say he hit her again. This didn't happen before he became American. Even now, you don't get it. But whenever it's on, you watch them snarl like mad dogs in a cage, these American men. You know it's true and try to help, but what can you do? You, Fatima, who still worships him. Mm. Um, I'm going to read a few, a few more poems and then we can get into the QA. Um, and I want um, So, also, my, poem, my book deals a lot with um, the theme of orphaning. I grew up as an orphan, my parents passed when I was really, really young. Um, and it was kind of this interesting thing being an orphan and being from an immigrant background and coming from a particularly, uh, like a background that has a lot of trauma and violence, which is its own kind of orphaning, right? Like I think thing, um, I think Stanford touched on this in his talk as well, but also thinking about when you kind of come from a legacy of violence, there's, there's this kind of way that that ruptures and you, you have to really work to figure out some of those things and understand stuff about your own family or your own blood history. Um, and so orphaning is a big theme in the book. And this poem is called Gulb. Allah, you gave us a language where yesterday and tomorrow are the same word. Gulb, a spell cast with the entire mouth. 
back of a throat to teeth. Tomorrow means I might have her forever. Yesterday means I say goodbye again. Gull means they are the same. I know you can bend time. I am merely asking for what is mine. Give me my mother for no other reason than I deserve her. If yesterday and tomorrow are the same, pluck the flower of my mother's body from the soil. Gull means I'm in the crib, eyelashes wet as she looks over me. Gull means I'm on the bed, crawling away from her, my father back from work. Gull means she's dancing at my wedding, not yet come. Gull means she's oiling my hair before the first day of school. Gull means I wake to her strange voice in the kitchen. Gull means she's holding my unborn baby in her arms, helping me pick a name. All right, so I think I'm going to read a few more poems. Um, so the, do you all know, um, is anyone Muslim in here? Oh, yay! OK, once I got like one. <laughs> um, so um, this poem, so a lot of, you know, I'm Muslim, and a lot of my poems kind of deal with um, Muslim identity, um, particularly thinking about um, a kind of uh, the fact that I'm both queer and Muslim and the ways that I felt not entirely comfortable in either community. Um, and this poem is called Halal, which just means halal is like something that is um, like approved by God. Um, and it's called halal. The Uber I step into is halal. At least the driver tells me so. He says, this window is halal, this door is halal, this floor, and we both laugh. The prayer hung in the rear view, a minaret that calls my knees, the closest to masjid I have been in years. Tonight, this ride is the ummah I choose. The driver's hoot, a dervish that whirls my smile. He says, I am 1% halal, 99% shaitan, at least my devil is honest. Sadaq is sugar, at least my devil is honest. My skirt a little too short, my collarbones bridges for lover's fingers to find flight. I never dress right for any weather, my arms a gathering of bumps. All my auntie's shame ice the blood below my inked veins. My knees wobble on the edge of what I should be and what I am. At the end of my sight, I dream a world brimming with my contradictions. When I turn to look, it disappears. My devil quiet the days I wrap my hair in a bouquet. But tonight, mashallah, we are safe from his gaze in this rush chariot. I lace the back seat with my haram. I traced an altar in my God's name. So I'm going to end on one last poem, which is the title poem of the collection, um, If They Come For Us. And I wrote this shortly after the um, election. These are my people, and I find them on the street and shadow through any wild, all wild. My people, my people, a dance of strangers in my blood. The old woman sorry dissolving to wind, Bindi a new moon on her forehead. I claim her my kin, and so the star of her to my breast. The toddler dangling from stroller, hair a fountain of dandelion seed at the bakery, I claim them too. The Sikh uncle at the airport who apologizes for the pat down, the Muslim man who abandons his car at the traffic light, drops to his knees at the call of the azan, and the Muslim man who drinks good whiskey at the start of Maghrib, the lone kala at the park pairing her kurta with crops, my people, my people, I can't be lost when I see you. My compass is brown and gold and blood. My compass, a Muslim teenager, snap back in high tops gracing the subway platform. Mashallah, I claim them all. My country is made in my people's image. If they come for you, they come for me too. In the dead of winter, a flock of aunties step out on the sand. Their debuttas turn to ocean. A colony of uncles grind their palms and a thousand jasmines bell the air. My people, I follow you like constellations. We hear glass smashing the street and the nights opening dark. Our names, this country's wood for the fire. My people, my people, the long years we've survived, the long years yet to come. I see you map my sky, the light, your lantern long ahead, and I follow, I follow. Thank you. Thank you.